take you further north now. Hezbollah has launched rockets from southern Lebanon into northern Israel. Israeli airstrikes on the villages of Daria and Yerin followed. On Tuesday, Hezbollah fired a guided missile at an Israeli military vehicle. Israeli forces then bombed Hezbollah outposts. Ali Hashim joins us now from Daira, where fighting has been taking place. What does the situation look like in places like Daria now? We're right now on the borders. This is the borderline. I, I think our colleague Raed could show us. This wall separates Lebanon from the Israeli territories, and this is the blue line. Over here, the whole uh, developments and all the escalation was taking place. And uh, today, earlier today, Hezbollah launched several guided missiles towards an Israeli military post uh, somewhere here in uh, Arab al-Aramsha uh, village. And then there was, uh, following this uh, launch, there, there was a battle between the fighters of Hezbollah and the Israeli army. Israelis used also drones in hitting several targets, also in hitting all the bushes surrounding uh, the borders. And now maybe we can walk a bit around in this area, because this is on the periphery of, uh, of Dhera. Dhera starts from just like a few meters from here, maybe uh, Raad could show us. And then the Israeli artillery started hitting houses in the, in the town, in the village. Uh, in Dhera and on the other side in Yarin, another village that's close to here. And it, as we understood that there were uh, two people injured, two civilians injured, a lady and a man. Uh, however, there's no reports with respect to casualties on uh, both sides, whether on Hezbollah's sides or uh, the Israeli side. Um, the, uh, the whole incident ended, however, it just boosted the uh, uh, tension in this area and escalated more and more the situation, whereas people are now asking more and more whether this is a beginning of a, of a series of attacks and uh, with, with Lebanon now becoming an operation area, will this drag Lebanon into the conflict? and take this conflict into a kind of a, a new dimension. All right, Ali Hashim, we really appreciate the perspective that you're giving us right up at the border where trouble broke out. Good reporting there. Thanks so much, Ali Hashim. Let's bring in Hassan Ahmed Khalil. He's a Lebanese economic reformist and political analyst who specializes in Middle East Affairs, joins us now from London. Good to have you with us. So first of all, let's start with the question of, do you think Hezbollah will commit to fully enter this battle? Or do you think these rocket exchanges and bombardment exchanges we've seen in the north are still simply symbolic affairs? Uh, I, I, it's very hard to predict what the Hezbollah will do in light of circumstances without knowing the end picture in Gaza. I see that the Gaza front is only uh, another front in third world war, which has, we are already, people are questioning if, if we are coming to third world war. I did write and say we are in the middle of it. The Ukraine-Russia war is one front. Now the Gaza and the Middle East is another front, and I expect to see new fronts very soon in Africa and Asia. Now, re regarding the Lebanese border, if there is, uh, if there is a new front, on the Lebanese border, I would be very doubtful if that front would be limited only to Lebanon to add to Gaza. Once the Lebanon front is open, this means Syria is engaged, this means Iraq and Yemen is engaged, and it, go, it could go all the way to an all-out war, regional war that could involve uh, Iran as well and, and the Western camp. If this happens, then we're talking about Armageddon Day. People think that maybe I'm over-exaggerating, but I think everybody is playing a dangerous game. I think everybody is squeezed against a, a, in a wall or in a corner and is looking for a corridor to, to, you know, in order to ease the tension. And on one front, the Israelis and the Western camp 
uh, are in a position where they think that should they should recover what has been considered a big blow in light of the Gaza offensive. On the other front as well, nobody can afford from the camp of what we call the resistance movements in order to see that this uh, attack on Gaza could continue endlessly without doing something. The only question here is to what extent that people can watch, uh, to what level they can see destruction in Gaza before certain trigger could escalate into an overall regional war. In answering to your question, I don't think Lebanon front will uh, flare up without dragging the whole region into a, an outright regional war. Given what you've said then, if this is possibly, if not likely, to turn into a much larger war, that really then takes the question to what do the main powers in either camp, as you put it, want? Have they really thought this through? Have they made their decisions? What's your analysis listening to the statements coming out from the major powers in, in both camps, listening to what the US president said last night, listening to the statements coming out from on the other side, from Iran, from Hezbollah? I can, I can tell you simply, both, both camps, as I said, are squeezed. And as in the Ukraine-Russia war, at the beginning of this war, I did come with the conclusion that if both, both camps in the Ukraine-Russia war come to reason and logic and say we can be, both camps could be out of this war as win-win situation, we could have resolved it a year ago. Now, similarly, in Gaza front now, or the Middle East region in general, both camps cannot hope for a win-win situation. Anybody who thinks that can come out of such a violent uh, you know, confrontation can come out with a, as a winner I think is simplifying and underestimating the circumstances. The best scenario is to come out of this camp, uh, for both camps, is to come up uh, out as no lose, no lose. The win-win situation is out of question. Now the best scenario is no lose, no lose. How do we come out with this scenario of no lose, no lose? If everybody allows, uh, if both parties allow the other party to have a corridor to come to reason and say, listen, nobody can come as a winner out of this. Let's sit and talk logic and let's find a resolution. The only problem or deficiency I see in this is the arrogance of excess power. Anybody who thinks they have excess power, that they can dictate a solution today anywhere in these conflicts, be it in Ukraine, Russia, or Gaza, or what is possible confrontation, on, in China Sea, uh, is foolish. I think the world, is, the world, I say it categorically, the world is living the most dangerous moments since World War II. And the world now is in a polarization formation, exactly similar to that that happened before First World War and Second World War. The world is in desperate need of wise people, logical people, reason to come back, the, the, the mentality of force and enforcing the power of force will only lead that we could come to potential nuclear danger. All right. Thank you for your uh, analysis of the situation. Thank you, sir.